right numbers of nursing and midwifery staff in the right place at the right time is key to safe patient care. There's a large and growing body of international evidence that clearly demonstrates the link between safe staffing and the safety and quality of patient care. For these reasons, safe staffing for our nurses and midwives is a national priority. The matching of nursing and midwifery care hours to the care needs of patients 24 hours a day, seven days a week is essential in achieving optimum patient outcomes. This requires consistent, focused attention. Nurses and midwives, managers, executives, health unions and professional leaders and the government all have a role to play. In 2005, a committee of inquiry was formed to look at the key components of safe staffing. The parties agreed that a more robust and evidence-based solution was required to address safe staffing issues. As a result, the Safe Staffing Healthy Workplaces Unit was established to carry out the committee's recommendations. In response, the Care Capacity Demand Management Programme was developed. Its aim to develop and support DHB implementation of an effective nursing and midwifery staffing methodology that ensures patient safety, satisfactory work environments for our nurses and midwives and the best use of the available health resource. What's important about this to clinical nurses and midwives? The CCDM program is designed to ensure that every ward on every shift has nursing and midwifery resourcing, rosters and ward budgets based on real patient demand. Trendcare is the acuity system used by New Zealand DHBs to collect this information. The effectiveness and success of care capacity demand management hinges on accurate acuity data being entered by nurses and midwives at the point of care. This is where care decisions are made and acted on by the people who are the most qualified and knowledgeable to do so. The CCDM program has developed and evolved since 2008. The program has been independently evaluated twice and deemed to be effective programming for addressing safe staffing. In 2018, the program was copyrighted by the Ministry of Health and it was published on its own dedicated website, ccdm.health. .nz. The website contains all of the CCDM program components, tools and process steps. It also provides detailed program roadmaps for DHBs that describe in detail how to implement the program. The CCDM program has three components, the staffing methodology, the core data set and variance response management. All three program components need to be fully implemented by DHBs as intended because they're designed to work together to create safe staffing. NZNO members were united and adamant during the recent 2018 MECA negotiations that this critical issue needed addressing immediately. This has led to the strongest mandate to date for all DHBs to fully implement the Care Capacity Demand Program by June 2021. This mandate provides an opportunity to refresh and renew the partnership between NZNO and the DHBs and increase pace and scale to ensure our safe staffing needs are met. Here's what we know. Ensuring nursing and midwifery staffing matches patient care needs on every ward, every shift is essential for patient safety. Unsafe nursing and midwifery staffing is a risk to quality patient care. Repeated and respected research over many years clearly tells us this. The CCDM program supports DHBs to make safe staffing happen. CCDM is built on the foundation of expert professional judgment of our nurses and midwives regarding the care needs of patients. CCDM uses patient acuity data provided by nurses and midwives on every ward for every shift to determine the budget, the roster, additional immediate staffing needs and accurate measurement of how well their DHB is providing safe care. The current MECA provides the mandate for all DHBs to complete CCDM implementation by June 2021. Uh, CCDM has been quite a long journey for us. We've been involved since uh, CCDM was first implemented. Uh, we were one of the original pilot sites. 
We already had tree and care implemented here. So we already were in, um, in the habit of utilising our tree and care variances uh, to support some of our staffing decisions. However, at that time it was very much around um, hours in variance, plus or minus. Um, and so uh, that was the limit uh, extent of our utilisation of tree and care to manage staffing at that time. So CCDM for us represented the ability to include both Trendcare and a much broader set of indicators, for example, in terms of variance response. Prior to CCDM, and this was something that we learnt throughout our implementation, we learnt that without the programme or the framework of CCDM, that there was a lot of duplication, there was a lot of checking, lots of checking and rechecking. CCDM therefore gives us the opportunity to have an agreed framework of both measures, indicators, as well as an agreed process around full-time FTE calculations. It gives us a common language. We're no longer having to say, um, uh, awards no longer having to say, we are in a variance colour, and then going into a long protracted discussion about what that actually is. We know what mauve, green, yellow, orange and red means. And we also recognise that that is um, a common language that is used across all systems now. So from allied health, um, medical theatres, all of our units and departments, um, clerical, volunteers, all of our teams, um, orderlies, they will all say to us what their colour is. Um, the other thing that CCDM gave us the opportunity to do was to explore data and technology around how we visualised our hospital status. Um, so we call it hospital status at a glance. Uh, so that was an ability for us to be able to share across the system uh, what our hospital was like. Um, as well, it gave us an opportunity to formalise our whole IOC and how we utilised technology and were able to get people around the table for a time and place every day to talk about how the hospital was functioning. And then that moved on to what our measures of success would be in our core data set. And the core data set, of course, has evolved and changed over time. Um, and so we um, are now, and, and I guess the program for us has evolved and changed over time. We've matured with the program as the program's matured with, with us and, and across the organisation and nationally. So our core data set that we used you know, five years ago is now evolving and our ability to use technology to reflect that and have that at a glance uh, for people and um, having that data agility um, is something that we that is growing and developing. Uh, so that's important. And the breadth of the core data set to including uh, quality and safety measures for our patients, quality and safety measures for our staff, as well as organisational resources um, and organisational broad measures. Um, so f at all layers has been really important. Another key thing for nursing, of course, is how we ensure that we have our baseline staffing um, at appropriate levels so that we are then able to use our variance response really appropriately rather than using over using our variance response to meet baseline requirements. So we were uh, one, of the, one of the pilot DHBs as well when we had the first FTE calculation methodology um, and we have delightedly moved into the FTE software calculation process and we've now moved on to now doing that as an annual process. Prior to CCDM, um, uh, we, would, we would do that with an uh, Excel spreadsheet um, in conjunction with our decision support advisors and finance um, on, a, on an annual sort of rollover basis. Uh, FTE calculations to increase FTE were historically um, were done purely on a business case um, argument perspective. So we still have the business case process, but it is informed by the FTE calculation. For more information on the Care Capacity Demand Management Programme, including the FTE calculation, the core data set and variance response management, go to ccdm.health.nz.